Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Innovation Podcast, your source for all things innovation. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Michael Canavo on the line. He's co-founder and chief marketing officer over at Super 73. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Adam. All right, so I'm pumped about today's topic. So how Super 73 has achieved rapid growth through viral marketing. I mean, easier said than done. I, I can't. I want to know the secrets. I want to do the same. So we're going to get into that. But um, before we do, I want to talk a little bit more about the company. So how did you get on this path of starting the company? I mean, it's an interesting story. Yeah, you know, a, a group of us were at a uh, at another startup in uh, based in Orange County, and, and and it wasn't doing too well. Wrong product, wrong time. I think we all know what that's like. Um, and we got together and thought, hey, is what is something that's really exciting and unique that we want that we could you know post on the internet? And uh, we all loved kind of motorcycle heritage, and we thought, hey, what if we created a style stylized version of an electric bike that that took a lot uh, from the 70s from motorcycle culture. Uh, you know, didn't know exactly if, if it would catch on, but we thought, hey, let's put it on Kickstarter. Um, within a month, uh, did, uh, I believe it was over 700 units. Um, so it kind of caught us, uh, caught us off guard. Um, and from then on, we became Super 73, the, uh, the company. Wow, what an amazing story. And uh, and for everybody that's listening, I mean, you just go to the website, super73.com. I mean, it's pretty obvious to me, like, but you don't know until you put it out there, right? Like, you don't know until you see those orders come in, right? Right, right. And and we were sitting there kind of kind of hoping that it would that it would catch. And within, like, about a week, some big publications picked it up, and it was just wildfire from there. Man, that's amazing. So, so I get, and that's a good lead in. So, you know, you were able to do this through viral marketing. I mean, easier said than done. How were you really able to grow Super 73 with really, um, according to my notes, no marketing budget, like no real outside help there? Like, what, what was the secret? Because a lot of people listening would love to, to capture that if they could. Yeah, so some behind the scenes on having a uh, failing startup is you have no money. Um, so when we, uh, when we launched this company, it was, never an option. Uh, ads were never even something we thought about. Um, and, and myself, I had come from this uh, now defunct app called Vine. Uh, and it's basically six second content that you could just absorb and scroll along. Um, and that's where I got my start. And I learned kind of the formula on holding people's attention for that amount of time, what it takes to become viral. And I, I took those, those lessons I had learned and basically put them into bike format. So uh, everything that worked for content uh, on that platform, I just thought, hey, I'm, I'm marketing to the same demographic. It was millennials at the time, uh, you know, and, and, and young Gen X. Uh, so we kind of took the same same rules and put them in, and, and it was just viral hit after viral hit. The first video got 1.5 million views. Uh, second had about 800,000, and from then on, we just kind of kept cranking along with the same formula. Wow, what a story. And I don't care what anybody says. I miss Vine. Sorry, I do. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> I miss it. I don't care what anybody says. It was fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but um, so what are the, like, uh, now, obviously, so obviously you, you know the content. The content matters, which I, I, want, I want to spend a little bit more time on the content piece of things because mm -hmm. I, I find that many times, 
um, you know, people that don't have that background, what, whatever the product. Now, obviously, you have these amazing, sexy bikes, but it doesn't matter what the inter- what the industry is. The content and marketing to your demographic is really going to be the difference between what allows a piece of content to go, quote, unquote, viral in your space or the masses. I mean, you don't need to be like even this word viral. It's like if, if you're a lawyer and you're and you have and you belong to part of a lawyer um, organization that has, you know, 10,000 members of the United States. If you have a piece of content that everybody in that 10,000 people, whatever, have seen, um, it's a possibility you're going to get some referrals there, right? Like, so the idea of where you want to go viral is important and how. Like, can you just talk a little bit more on that content side of things? Absolutely. And, you know, we could talk about this for hours, but to keep it to 15 minutes, I'll give uh, kind of a, a general overview um, when it came time for me to create content based around this product, I knew it, it didn't need to be about the product. Um, the product was almost the final piece of this equation. It was about the lifestyle. It was about mm. touching our consumers where they were and speaking to them in their language. So what is that? It's, it's authenticity, which gets thrown around a lot. Um, but it really is just, hey, don't show only your strengths. Show your weaknesses. Communicate honestly and openly with your uh, followers. They want to know who's behind the product. They want to know what product they're buying, especially now that we're getting into Gen Z. It's really about that kind of integrity-based company. And so we took the product. We put it in a uh, – uh, basically just in a setting that, that could speak to the lifestyles of young millennials. So what is that? It's adventure. It's escape. It's exploration. Uh, all on a budget uh, because, uh, you know, we've had to kind of learn how to uh, do more with less. Um, so by doing that, it really spoke to that entire demographic, really our entire generation. Um, and we were able to kind of market this product to them to say, hey, look, this is going to improve and enhance your life. It's going to do more than what a car can do. Less money, no insurance. We kind of played on those notes. And it really struck a chord with, uh, with the audience we were trying to hit. It's awesome. And, uh, and and the things that you said as you're saying them, I'm thinking, I'm listening, I'm like, oh, he makes it sound so easy. <laughs> even, I mean, even like even the authentic voice and all this, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm like, you make it sound so easy, which obviously you've done it and you're trained to do it. And this is your job day in and day out. Right. But for somebody who it's not their job, like what you just said, it's like, oh, yeah, we just have to do that. But getting to that is so hard. It's just not an easy thing. <laughs> right. And, and I think what it what it needs to start as is, is mm-hmm. how can we be more honest with our consumers? How can you be more yeah. honest with your customers? A lot of companies are afraid of showing weakness. We've seen this mm-hmm. over and over again. I mean, we see it with the now, uh, unfortunately, out of business boosted board. Um, they were afraid of showing weakness. It needed to be polished. It needed to be sharp. Everything needed to be corporate and perfect. And that was not their writer group. Their writer group were these aggressive, young, uh, kind of adventurous, creators, YouTubers, and and TikTokers, and when they had their eye on that part of the market, uh, you know, speaking through influencers like Casey Neistat and Jesse Wellens, uh, they were able to communicate their vision, but once those things stopped, we saw how, okay, this thing got too corporate, too big, Mm -hmm. there were too many other competitors out there that were doing it good enough or better, um, Mm -hmm. and they just became obsolete, and so when I say authentic, it's about jumping in front of the camera and saying, Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Michael. I'm one of the co-founders here. Uh, today, we're dealing with X, and this is why we're dealing with it. And this is how, you know, it is impacting the business, and here's how you guys can help. And here's – so basically, you give them ownership of the company in a way, so where they feel like they can speak on the issues as well. Oh, man. you—you you, uh, I'll tell you what. You're, you're, like, giving me all these tasks. I'm like, oh, and you're right. You're just right, and I know you're just right. And I hope my other co-founder doesn't doesn't listen to this one because if he does, then I got more work to do on my end. So thanks a lot. I'm I have to start streaming and all this other stuff. Thank you, Michael. I'm sorry, <laughs> but for everybody listening, you know, I'm taking the medicine too. If you want to benefit from and be able to have some of the success, like a Super 73, um, and to duplicate some of those things in your own space, of course, um, this 
these like this medicine that Michael's talking about, um, which um, it's part of what's needed. And I mean, it really I shouldn't say medicine, but it is the formula. It's the secret. It's the reason why some companies can do what you've done, and why others, you know, unfortunately, maybe take a little bit longer. And I'm not saying they don't they don't come around at some point, but um, if you can find that like that niche like you have, um, that's really interesting. Uh, which leads me to the next thing. So. Um, what do you see the future of Super 73 looking like? I mean, what's the, how, where's the next part in this narrative? Because you already you had a great start. What's next? Right. We've we've we're so lucky to have the you know the the the, the audience and the the consumers that we have, and so we want to be able to go with them. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of demands from our riders for more of this or faster this or uh, more powerful here, and and so we are listening to those things and. Um, you know, today we are a, a bike company, but our vision goes so far beyond that. Um, and we want to make sure that we have the perfect product, the right space, the right time. But we also want to make sure we don't get stagnant. We know that, um, you know, uh, companies that stick around are constantly innovating and taking the magic that they have and turning it into, you know, next year's version of that. So uh, we've recently hired on a ton of professionals from, uh, you know, the motorcycle world, the the electric world, uh, kind of pulling in in the fashion world, pulling in all sorts of directions to try to um, make a better product and and one that can stand the test of time, uh, you know, continue to uh, throughout this next decade. So that's kind of where we're at. Our team has been growing rapidly. We uh, uh, we were blessed enough to be able to flourish through this past season of uh, you know uh, chaos that was 2020. Um, mm-hmm. We are definitely ahead of the game here. So. Um, rapid growth is, is the name we're expanding. Uh, our team in Europe is now about 25 people deep. Uh, and so, you know, when, when, when COVID first started, we had about four over there. So, uh, there's definitely good growth on, on that end of things too. So, uh, we're just excited to pursue this momentum and, and to keep innovating. Man, that is so exciting. Uh, so Michael, if somebody is, um, listening to this, now you've given them quite a bit of, let's just say, your, your secret sauce, I guess. One of the things that I'll also throw out there is I know, you know, the, the value of partnerships in these spaces. So I know you work with, you know, different influencers and other people. What I want you to stress or kind of just let us into the, the back end of what that looks like is you're building a community. And this is the way I see it. So you're building, you build, you're building a community that encompasses, of course, your, um, your, 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 your clients, your customers, whatever we want to say there. You have your, your company, you know, proper, like your team in Europe and otherwise. Mm-hmm. But you also have, you know, the advocates, like the people that have audiences and that believe in your message and the authenticity of what you're sharing, who you partner with. And that, and I think those, like, relationships are also important for others listening that maybe haven't considered going down that path. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, oh, I love this question. Um, for, so for us, we've actually we've never paid for an influencer or a sponsored post. We've actually never exchanged uh, a cash for those things. And we've had, you know, well over 300, 400 uh, verified influencers posting with our product. And what that was is finding the ones that genuinely fit your vision. Find the influencers that may not be the biggest, but are definitely the best fit for your brand. Um, and what I mean by that is if it's electric, you need to find somebody who is trusted in that space. And, and you know, we had a micro influencer who, who had, uh, I believe, 10,000 followers at the time. Uh, but, but just electric nerds, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. just our favorite kinds of people. Um, and he made a video and that video pulled in about 2 million views. Um, wow. so it really doesn't matter if, if the creator isn't the biggest in the space, it's about that creator being a perfect fit. And when you pursue that path, you'll find that the people who want to work with you, they're not looking for a paycheck. They're looking to be a part of a story that is really, you know, exciting and gives them something to be excited about. Casey nice. That's a great version of that. Um, you know, we've never paid him for a post, never asked him for anything. Everything he's done has been out of the goodness of his heart because he really understands and and believes in what we're doing here at Super 73. Wow, what an amazing story! And I love and I love that you say because sometimes I think sometimes brands get caught up on the like and for those that haven't worked with a lot of things on the vanity metric sides of things and it's like right. all right I get it but and I okay that's fine and I'm not I'm not I'm not making an argument against it but I'm just saying that the longest the longer term partnerships and the things that I think the real like audience and consumers um value is that same connection. 
So meaning they get that connection also through that content that they're creating, um, that the influencers are creating and otherwise. And it's just you're creating really like win-win-win situations is the way I see it. Absolutely. I think you, you hit the nail on the head with the vanity point. Uh, don't worry about the biggest influencer. Worry about the influencer that will post and be excited about what you're doing. And it'll spread from there. you got to trust that your writers and your customers are going to be missionaries for your product. Um, and it'll eventually get to where it needs to go, even if it takes longer than, uh, you know, than, than you might want. Perfect. Well, Michael, um, this has been great. So if somebody is listening to this and they want more information on Super 73 and they want to follow the narrative and check out these amazing um, bikes, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect with the brand overall? Yeah, so our, our website's uh, www.super73.com, and we are Super 73 on all platforms. It's just the word super, the number 73, real easy. Um, and uh, our Instagram is actually uh, becoming kind of a fun place to share our community stories and the collaborations. We're calling 2021 the year of collaborations because we have pulled some uh, some collabs that we didn't think were, uh, were possible. So we're going to be sharing all that there on that platform. Amazing. Well, Michael, thank you again for coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great stuff you're doing over at Super 73. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast, uh, especially if you're a first-time listener. would love to have you be a repeat listener. We have some more great guests coming up. I want you to definitely catch those episodes. And if you're watching our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Innovation, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Um, love to continue the conversation conversation in our YouTube community and see what kind of projects that you're working on. And Michael, thanks again for coming to the show. It's been awesome. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun.